So this spirit, the transformative spirit of love. Being a good Presbyterian, I never really dealt with the Holy Spirit. <laughs> and my first book is called The Grace of Sophia. It was all on wisdom Christology. And I said, this is what I'm going to do for the rest of my life. I said, I'm going to do Christology because this is it. I said, we need to overcome this maleness of Jesus and bring in this Sophia Jesus so that everybody can, can become feminist <laughs> and welcome the woman into the church. But that was the last book I actually wrote on, the, uh, on, on Christology and everything has been on the Holy Spirit. Because I think it is the Spirit that moves us I think it is this time of the Spirit. I think whether you're Presbyterian or not, we need to be open to the Spirit. It is the Spirit that will come. And, you know, I do interfaith um, dialogue. That's another thing I do. I've been working with the World Council of Churches, uh, working on climate change and interfaith dialogue. How do we do this? And we know many of us don't like to talk about interfaith um, dialogue. When the World Council of Churches met, um, in Korea a couple years ago for the General Assembly. Koreans are not happy with the World Council of Churches because the World Council of Churches keeps talking about embracing all the other people of faith. So I didn't attend that assembly meeting, but I had friends who did, and they said there were just as many protesters outside the building <laughs> as there were as many people in attendance inside the building. Because it's very difficult for us to be kind of open to the movement of the Spirit. And when I do this interfaith dialogue, when I talk to people of other faith, they all have this concept of the Spirit. Now, isn't that amazing? <laughs> spirit was there in the Old Testament, Ruha, and then Numa in the New Testament. My second book is called Holy, The Holy Spirit, Chi and the Other. And I fought so hard to get rid of the word holy off my title. I said, I don't need the word holy in it. I just wanted the spirit. I actually called it the spirit within. Publishers said no. And then we had a phone conversation. And then finally I had to back out of my uh, book title. He was persistent that we put holy um, in front of the spirit. I kind of am kind of always questioning, why do we need the word holy in front of the Spirit? And I think once Christians did put holy in front of the Spirit, we kind of monopolize the Spirit. It, it just, it's our Spirit now. Spirit can't work globally. So this is something I kind of wrestle with. I can't do anything about that book title. But, but I still just write about the spirit, the transformative spirit of love. That the spirit that exists, you know, I'm not really into sciences, though I wish I was one day a scientist. But looking at that uh, astronaut, I can't remember his name at the moment. Um, who was the astronaut that just came back from the space? Mark, yeah. If you follow his Twitter or Instagram, Fabulous pictures. That's why I want to be an astronaut. I want to go up there and take fabulous pictures. But when you look at the pictures of the earth, we are so minute and we're thinking as Christians, we only have this little, have the spirit and we're going to keep the spirit within us. Wow. This world is humongous and this universe is humongous. God who created all of us and this whole universe to say the spirit now we're going to keep because it's the Holy Spirit. It's something that I wrestle with. But I think without the spirit, we cannot transform the world and we are called to transform the world. We cannot fight this institutional racism and sexism that exists in our culture, in our churches, in our society. We can't fight it unless the Spirit comes into our lives and transforms us. Spirit God is the source and destiny of our longing. The power of the Spirit God 
empowers all of us to be instruments of peace and love, harmony and justice. Our spirit-led energy inspires us to work for justice where there is no justice and to bring love where there is no love. God's spirit is a healing balm restoring the broken bodies of women and children, of people of color, of African Americans, Native Americans, Hispanics, all of us sitting here, the broken body into the body of Christ. As we cry out from our places of deepest sorrow and sadness, God hears our cry and brings healing and hope. A prophetic theology of the Spirit will free us from the oppressive notions of God and allow us to recognize the otherness and holiness in God and in each other. The Spirit lends itself to a movement toward the decentering of the cultures of oppression, moving us toward equality and justice for all. It is the Spirit of God who will give us life and sustain us as we maneuver throughout through the complexities of immigrant life and living as a foreigner or as a person of color or living as a woman who is under sexism and oppression. God's Spirit is within us and empowering us to work. It's empowering us to become courageous prophets and lead us into the walk towards social justice. To go up to the mountaintop and share the good news that God's Spirit dwells in all of us. As a sign of the loving God and our neighbors, we need to reach out to the marginalized, to those who are poor, to those who are oppressed, sharing God's mercy through embracing the other. Now is the time for us to love and embrace all people of God so that all the embracing love of God can be experienced by all God's children. Amen. <laughs>